So hi everyone, thank you for watching. Today I'm with Jack Shaw, the World MMA Champion, Cage Warriors World Champion at Bantamweight, currently 13-0, undefeated and undefeated as an amateur as well, and currently signed by the UFC, one of only four Welshmen uh, who is currently signed by the UFC. And today um, we're going to be having a chat about Jack's uh, life, his career, uh, his mental preparation for fights, what it's like fighting in the UFC, um, a whole load of things really, and hopefully there'll be something in this interview for everybody. So, um, so yeah, Champ, thank you for taking the time to talk to me, by the way, because I know you're very busy with, obviously, with your training and with everything that's going on. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem, mate. No problem at all. Excellent. Okay. So how was it like getting back from, um, obviously, from the Fight Island and all that? I mean, did, did, like, did you have to quarantine or, I mean, what, what's the... What's the sort of situation with that side of things? Yeah, so I had to um, I had to do fourteen days uh, quarantine. Not, not nothing like you know nothing that was in force. Just had to spend uh, two weeks in my house. Um, you know, I went out for the odd odd bit of exercise here and there, but but we kept it sort of as 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 strict as possible. Really, you know. Um, although to be honest, I, I wasn't too worried about like passing it on or anything. So I know I've been tested five times out there, so. I mean, the only way I would have caught it would have been if I caught it on the plane, and every, everybody who was on the plane with me were also tested. You know, it wasn't a, yeah. it yeah. wasn't a, it wasn't a private flight as such. Then it was a, um, you know, it was a, it was a fight only for the UFC sort of fighters and their corner man. So everyone there was oh, tested and, and had a negative, you know, was negative of the virus anyway. So it it wasn't something you know I was worried about passing on, but I thought I better you know just in case someone checks, I sort of keep, keep it in the house as much as I possibly could. Absolutely, yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. Yes, yeah, you know, it's better to be caught, like, safe with these types of things. So, yeah. Oh, good, okay. So, yeah, I mean, starting off at the, um, you know, at the beginning, I'm, I'm going to start off with with, a, with an easy one, um, actually, that I, I don't actually know the answer to anyway. The name Tank, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, that, that's what you're known as. Where did that originally come from? Um, I mean, where, where did, you know, who first came up with that name? Um, maybe there's a good story behind it, I don't know. So, o over to you on that one. Yeah, it's, it's quite an old school one, to be honest. Um, also, I started training at a very young age, um, sort of like six, seven years of age. And um, my father was training, uh, my father actually was my coach, actually started about six weeks after I did at the same gym. So... You know, a couple of years went by and, um, you know, he used to take me to the gym on the weekends. Obviously, I was on key um, to, to the gym we used to train at. And obviously, a lot a lot of the guys would, would sort of meet up and have a spar and I would just keep myself busy on the bags and stuff like that. And um, I, I jumped in the spar with the men one day. I, I'd imagine I was probably about eight years of age. You know, not, nothing heavy. They were just having a little play around, really. And um, I, I sparred with a guy called Simon Orner, who was, um, was like a bit, who was a bit, who was, you know, as far as Welsh ever made, he goes, he was probably one of the first guys to to be involved. Um, and and basically, we had a spar, and he said, he, he said sort of to my man, he's like, uh, you know, he's a little chubby kid. So he's like, he's, he's like a young tank Abbott. He said, you know, full of little belly on him and uh, and full of fury. So you know, him, him and uh, my old man then started calling me Tank. And 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 for years, I was sort of my gym nickname. Um, you know, because people would hear my dad call me Tank, they sort sort of just started. Um, and following suit, and and you know even even aside from the fight, then like my, my friends in school started calling me Tank because they a couple of them started training at the gym. All the boys they knew me as Tank, so they started calling me Tank. Then before I knew it, sort of everyone seems to know me as Tank now locally. Um, you know the only people I think in up Leary that, that don't that, that call me Jack is my mother, my girlfriend, and my girlfriend's mother, and and, and my sister. So you know it's a uh, it's. It's a fight name, but it is a genuine nickname as well. You know, it, it, when I started fighting, um, you know, they asked me for my nickname. It was, it was just second nature to put down Tank because I, I've been known as Tank for so long. I mean, outside of fighting as well, so it, it just made sense. Um, and obviously, Tank Abbott's a le legend in, in himself. So you know, if I can uh, follow on the Tank name in the UFC, then um, you know, I hope I can uh, add to his legacy a little bit. And uh, and there's a new era of Tank you now, rather than the old school Tank Abbott. Fantastic. Okay, so that's where the name come from. That, that's that's a cool story. I like that. So now another thing. I mean, as soon as we've sort of started there and sort of started, um, you know, back in time a little bit. Following on from that, obviously, you know, it, it's quite well known that back then, um, you know, you had some weight issues. Basically, you knew you were overweight and things like that. Now the reason I'm touching on that is not just for the sake of touching on it, but I I think it plays into 
your obviously um, psychological um, strength and that you know that, that you have to compete but um, anyway but just going back there I mean yeah I mean basically how did you how did you overcome that um, and I mean you know what what sort of motivated you to overcome um, that so I'm not it's not really one question it's just just your experience with with overcoming that side of things basically it was um, to be honest mate it was it was more so like just puppy fat you know what I mean I was I was never like um you know, obese or anything. I was just carrying a bit of a belly on me. And, you know, I, I don't be wrong, as a kid, my diet probably wasn't the best, but I, I just wasn't blessed with sort of good metabolism and good genetics. I mean, e even to this day, if, if I don't sort of reel my diet in a little bit, you know, I, I tank the weight on fast. So I, I'm just one of them. I'm not blessed with a great metabolism or uh, a, a great genetics, but I'm, I'm sort of blessed in other areas. I mean, I, I think I, I was always fit as a kid. You know, I was always training like four nights a week and, just sort of naturally as I got a little bit older, the weight came off a little bit. Um, I started amateur boxing, so obviously they encourage you to do a lot more running. So I was running sort of two or three times a week. That, that made a difference to the weight loss. And also just, just where I was competing a lot more, obviously when you sign up to compete as a kid, you just sort of do whatever weight category, you know, you just turn up in whatever your weight is, they, they put you in that sort of category. Whereas as you get a little bit older, like 15, 16, you know, you got to enter certain categories. So I had the, the sort of the weight limit was like, right, you got to enter, you know, under this kilo, under that kilo. So as I got older, um, that, that was the case. It helped me bring the weight down. And then, you know, the, the better results I was getting, I, I just started taking training and dieting more serious. You know, I was treating my, even as an amateur, I was, you know, training and dieting like an athlete. Um, obviously, as my pro career has gone on, I've had a lot of help sort of through, through my nutritionist and my strength conditioning. You know, my training's a lot more scientific now than what it was as an amateur. But, you know, going back, I, I sort of really leaned out when I started the amateur boxing and going into the amateur MMA scene just, just because I was so eager to compete. You know, I wanted to compete sort of every six to eight weeks if I could. Um, I think I fight uh, in MMA sort of in, in, in two years or 18 months. And, I know in amateur boxing is a little bit different. You can fight every week if you can, but that's sort of unheard of in the MMA scene to fight that, that often. Um, so where I was just competing all the time and fighting all the time, I didn't have a chance to sort of let my weight go up and down because I was constantly in shape because I constantly had to fight. And it's sort of been the same, I suppose, in my, my pro career because I've always sort of fought three, four times a year. Obviously, this year has been a little bit different because of the, the pandemic and everything, but I've always kept myself active and I've always had sort of the... Mentality. If I'm injury free, then there's no reason why why I shouldn't have a fight coming up. You know, it's it's my job and it's what I love to do. I'm blessed to be able to train for a living. So that's sort of my way of staying in shape. Because you know, I, I'm, and I'm not I'm not preaching that you know I'm on a diet seven days a week, three sixty five. Because my girlfriend and my family tell you that's not the case. You know, when, when I'm out to fight camp, I do let let slack a little bit on the diet front on the weekends and stuff like that. But you know, for the most part, I, I, I live a pretty clean lifestyle. I don't, I'm not a big drinker, and, and you know, so. But yeah, it was, it's definitely like the, the active competition um, is why I'll be shifting away from a youngster. So obviously coming through like a young man. And... Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, like I say, it's, it's one of those things that um, aside from how you've overcome it, it's, it's inspirational for other people that, you know, maybe going through the same thing and sort of wondering, you know, how to sort that out. So that, that's another reason for throwing that in there. But that, that's cool. Now, obviously, uh, in terms of um, training, you know, routines and, and, your, and your sort of regime like that, um, you know, very, very dedicated. Um, and I know, you know, you, you let loose sometimes, but then, you know, you earn that. But in an actual training camp, uh, and this is sort of a double-sided question because I'm, I'm interested in what it's like, obviously, training um, with your dad, with Richard, but I'm also interested in your actual training routine itself. So, again, it's not really one sort of narrow question. It's just... just Let's talk a little bit about um, what your training regime itself is, is actually like sort of day to day, basically. Um, that's, that's what I'm interested in. Yeah, so I knew, like, regardless of fight, fight coming up, no fight, I'm always in the gym. I, I, I don't sort of take, you know, if I haven't got a fight coming up, I'm in the gym anyway. I'm not one of those guys who only trains when they got a fight coming up. But I mean, in, in fight camp more specifically, I'm sort of training three, maybe four times a day, sort of five, six days a week, uh, rest on a Sunday. And I mean, it's a pretty rigid routine, you know. Uh, it's usually like a run or, or a bike ride, something sort of light in the morning just, just to kick the day off. Um, and then my midday session tends to be, you know, either sort of boxing, a boxing private with Gary or, or, or a Thai boxing private or like a strength conditioning session. And then I do my main session in the night then, which is usually um, my, my sparring or my wrestling or my, or my grappling. So 
Um, it, each day varies, obviously, like as far as the nighttime session is concerned. We, we have like sparring on a Monday, uh, Thai boxing Tuesday. We, we do just jujitsu sparring on a Wednesday, uh, wrestling sparring Thursday, and then back to the MMA on a, on a Friday and Saturday. Um, but it, it's very rigid, you know, uh, and that's how I like that. I'm a, I'm a creature of habit, so I like to have my routine. I like to know at the beginning of the week where each session is. And, you know, I, I do plan a lot of my own training camp. Um, the, don't get me wrong, I don't plan my own sessions, but as far as, like, what, what I do on what days, apart from the night session, it sort of falls on me. And um, to, as I've sort of grown as an athlete and grown as a professional, I've learned to, to listen to my body and a lot more. Um, you know, if, if I need to take my foot off the gas. You know, if I have a tough session, say, on a Thursday night, I might need to take my foot off the gas a little bit on the Friday morning, whereas going back sort of two years ago, it was just push, push, push all the time. But I've sort of learned that's where the injuries and the niggles come into play, and that's where you start to underperform. So, you know, rest is just as important. Your recovery sort of with your massage and, and, and your cryo chamber, stuff like that, is, is equally as important as the training. But, you know, I, I aim to try and do minimum of two sets. You know, if I'm doing two sessions a day, that usually means I'm, I'm, I'm having a tired day. You know, it, it's usually three to four if I can. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really rigid, obviously. The level I'm fighting at now is world level, so there's no sort of room to, to slack off in any area. So as long as I'm sort of fit and, and injury-free, I, I, I've got my schedule, I stick to it, and then obviously what happens in those sessions is all down to my coaches, you know. Like, where, where, you know, like a Monday sparring, it might be a matter of we just do like sort of three rounds, uh, five rounds, or it might be like a shark tank. It's, it's all dependent on what the coaches want us to do, obviously. I, I let them take complete control, same with like my strength conditioning, my boxing, my Thai boxing. I just turn up and, and what they tell me to do, I do, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And again, it's a good insight because, you know, um, people don't always see this from just, just from watching the fight or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I, and obviously people see behind the scenes, but uh, unless you're in the game, you don't always know. So that's cool. Now, obviously, um, that leads to something else, which is obviously the, the mental... Um, Man, okay, you good? You need, you need a minute? Yeah, no, right? the dog in it. He's out there yeah. scratching the door, but you'll have to wait. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Yeah, well, if you need to sort anything, just just carry on. It's, it's, no, it's no worry. See, you know, the, the mental side of things is something, to be honest, when I do interviews, it's, it's usually something I ask later on, but I'm, I'm curious to get to it now because as much as it requires, you know, what you do requires um, a lot of physical strength, discipline, commitment, etc. Uh, it also requires the same mentally and one of the things i've seen you know even working around the boxing even you know things like that is there's guys that are very 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 talented but you know they don't believe in themselves or whatever yeah. and they and they you know they don't always go as far as somebody who's you know maybe less talented but they believe in themselves more and vice versa and so on so what, what i'm sort of getting at is mentally i mean uh, again it's not one question but i mean what sort of separates you from the rest in terms of um your level of dedication in terms of what you've achieved so far in terms of how you prepare for fights you know the, just to just talk us through the, the mental side of it a little bit yeah again the mental side especially in mma or boxing any sort of combat sport or any sport at that level is is a bigger factor than people sort of layer on i mean you can be the best athlete in the world but if, if you if you sort of get to that fight day and you let your mind uh, take over in a negative way and, and put doubt and fear in your head, then, then you, you know, you, you, you're doomed from the start. And I've seen it happen, you know. I, I know so many, so many guys who I've trained over the years who are absolute monsters in the gym. You know, you can't get near them. You know, they, they, they're amateurs, but they're giving the pros and hard time. And then, and then they go out and fight a guy who, who, if they fought them in the gym without the cameras and the crowd and the lights... And, you know, the fact that it counts on your records. If they fought him in the gym, they would absolutely smash them. But you add in all these factors, um, you know, like, like I just said, then, then it's a completely different ball game. And I've seen that many times over the years. You know, you have what, the, what you call these gym monsters who just can't sort of take their, their gym game into the cage or into the ring. Um, and I, I think sort of what separates me a little bit from, from those sort of guys is I've always been able to perform in the cage how I do in the gym. Um, you have certain guys who perform better in the cage than they do in the gym. Whereas I'm one of those is if I'm pulling someone off in training and I'm drilling it, you know, and I'm performing very well, lean up to a fight and try and know for what I can take that into the cage with me. You know, never once have I sort of come out of there and thought, you know, that that was um, that didn't go how I expected it to go in, or that didn't go how I prepared for it to go. Then, you know, because obviously every fight is different. You, you, it never goes step by step how you expect. But I've always been able to sort of take my my strengths and, and, and my game plan from the gym into the cage or you know, the, 
the crowd and the, and the cameras and the lights and the, the fact that it's, it's, it's an official fight has never really bothered me, to be honest. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a big factor of my success. You know, I, I, like I always say, I'm not, the, I'm not the most sort of athletic. I'm not the, the strongest person you'll ever meet or the most, you know, the most explosive. But what, what I am it is, um, is very sort of technical. I, I, I've got a real life for technique. If you show me a technique, I, I pick it up very fast. And I don't need to be show twice when to pull it off and when not to pull it off. And I also carry what I can do in the gym into the cage. And, and that's not so much physical ability, that's mental ability. I, I train with guys, like I know I keep harping on about it, but I train with guys who, was, who are looking awesome for a fight. And then fight that comes and you think, you know, he just hasn't performed there. He's performed for the last six weeks in the cage. Whereas I've never really had that problem, you know. With my coaches for a game plan uh, in place for me, then they know I can carry that out during fight night. And, I, and to be honest, I'm never, I, I'm never one of those, I've never done sort of the mind training. You know, I see guys that work with sports psychologists. I've never sort of felt the need to do that. I'm not not anyone who does feel the need to do it, you know, because it obviously is very beneficial for a lot of guys. But it's never been something that I've, that I've had to do. I've just always been blessed that, you know, I'm quite mentally strong anyway, and, and I've got quite a strong mindset, which is, which is a big reason why I'm, you know, why I'm at the level I am today. Excellent. Okay, so really, really good insight that is, Jampus. Uh, you know, it's better again than, than what I was hoping for. So, so thank you for that. Now, there's only a couple more things, um, sort of more generic things, before I, I want to move into certain fights. But um, one of the other things that I touched on earlier, and I just want to go back to it, is obviously you know training with your dad and, tra and training with. Your dad. I mean, I'm I'm very fascinated by that dynamic because it, you know it's something that you see a lot. Um, you know, and I, I don't want to leave um, Gary Lockett out of this, obviously, because he, he's a fantastic coach uh, who I know very well. But uh, I don't want to leave him out. But just focusing on, on your training dynamic um, there. I mean, again, I mean, what, what is it like um, training with your father in, in that sense? I mean, you know, uh, again, it's not, it's not necessarily a, a narrow question. I know I keep saying that, but um, some of them are a bit more slightly more blanket, you know. OK, but yeah, I mean, just talk us a little bit about what, um, what that actual experience is like for, for somebody who, who doesn't know. Um, basically, that's where I'm coming from. Um, to be, I mean, it's, it's, again, I get this question a lot. It's a tough one for me to sort of explain in a sense, because he's always been my head coach. I've never had another head coach. You know, I've got Gary and Carl and, and Greg and him. Um, but I've never had, a, a, he's always been the head coach, so he's always been the boss. So it would, I can't sort of really compare it then to a time where I, I you know, had an head coach that wasn't my father because he's always been my head coach. But we seem to have um, the, the dynamic sort of, you know, nailed down. When we're in the gym, it's, it's not sort of, or, or during, you know, the session anyway, it's not sort of father and son then. It's, if he's the coach, so he may say something that I don't necessarily agree with, but, or I don't necessarily think is right. But, I know in the back of my mind it is right, you know, because he wouldn't be saying, he's not saying it for his benefit, he's saying it for his benefit, uh, for my benefit. Um, so we, we've got that sort of nailed down, you know, outside the gym, we've got a different relationship than what we have inside the gym. Um, we're both quite laid back, so we don't clash very often, you know, as you would expect sort of a father and son to it when you're working so closely all the time, you know, like when we was out in Abu Dhabi, I was away with him for the full 10 days and, um, you know, apart from a bit of moodiness due to the weight cut, I, I, you know, he, did, he didn't annoy me too many times. But no, we've, we've got it nailed down. And, um, you know, when, when we go into like the sort of fight night, uh, despite there's three guys in the corner, they sort of overlay the information to my dad because they know that that's sort of the voice I zone in on because that's the voice I've always had in the corner. My corner teams have changed over the years, um, but I've always had him in there. And... You know, each coach plays just a bigger role as he does in the sense of Carl, uh, my wrestling coach, and, and my other MMA coach, and, and yeah, like you say, Gary, my boxing, and him. But, you know, I, I sort of focus on his voice. And to be honest, it's one of them now where I, I've said it before, I don't think I would, I probably wouldn't be comfortable now fighting if he wasn't there. Um, just because it, it's the second nature now. You know, if, he, if he's not there, then I probably wouldn't fight. You know, he may keep, if he comes to me one day and says, look, I can't do it no more. Um, for whatever reason, then that'll, that'll very likely be the day that I sort of hang the gloves up and say, well, if you ain't doing it, I'm not doing it. So we, we've, got a, we've got a fighting relationship nailed down as well as our relationship outside the gym. But it's, it's, it's very obviously very successful. It's working for us, you know. We're unbeaten in, in MMA um, in, in 25 fights. So, you know, it's obviously working very well and what we're doing is working. Not to say that we may need to change things as the years go on, but, you know, I'll always want him there and I'll always want him in the corner for as long as I'm fighting. Brilliant. Okay. Excellent. 
All right then. So moving into some um, actual fights themselves. I mean, obviously, you know, obviously you've had a lot. I mean, um, you know, so there's there's more than we can talk about. Um, you know, all of them. But uh, a few highlights from that. I mean, so far, obviously, um, winning the uh, Cage Warriors World Championship is is obviously up there, and obviously you defended it as well. Um, but uh, you know, talking about winning it, uh, and I know this is this is probably something you, you've talked about a bit, um, quite a bit. But I, I still want to get it in there. Obviously, winning a world title. I mean, what you know, when I um, work around the boxing, you know, some guys say it's something you you know you can't put it into words or whatever and all that. Some people can actually describe it. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's something you, you have to experience to fully, um, you know, fully appreciate it or whatever. But uh, if you had to explain to somebody, um, you know, when you know when you won the fight, when when your hand was raised or whatever, what that um, sort of what goes through your mind or you know, um, from from your point of view um, in a situation like that, um, what, you know, how would you sort of describe? That experience it's not so much the fight itself but more that you know that that element when you won when you got there after you know all the years of, of dedication yeah. commitment and everything like i say i mean you know what what went through your mind basically to be honest the the world title one will always be special to me i mean num number one it was a world title i mean like as a kid i sort of won welsh titles and british titles um i won a european title as an amateur but i never sort of won that world and, and that wasn't through not being good enough it was just the opportunity never arose um on, on the amateur scene at the time. Um, so I, when I signed with Cage Warriors, like a lot of people was like, oh, you know, he's going to fight for the belt. And I never tried, I tried not to like zone in on it because I've always had the act with the one fight at a time. But, you know, as I started climbing around, it just started to become sort of like inevitable to me mentally that I was going to sort of fight for the belt. Um, and I started to sort of envision myself there, you know, having the world title status, actually having the belt. So when, when I did get a win, it was just like a, an elated feeling, you know, like all the years of sacrifice, you know, like missing birthdays and parties and, you know, missing time with your friends and family, that is all paid off. And also I was like over with my coaches as well because, you know, they put a lot of time into me for very little in return for a long time, you know, uh, to, sort of, to sort of win that world title and have like, you know how it is. I mean, that, that sort of goes on their resume as well then, you know, they've got a world champion. I mean, even like Gary Lockett, you look at all the accolades he's got as a coach, even sort of to add, like, well, he's certainly trained, trained an MMA world champion as well. So, I mean, it, it was great to sort of show off their hard work as well a little bit. And, and especially, like, the, the conditions of the fight, you know, sort of, for whatever reason, the, the UK MMA media sort of ripped me off for the fight. I'm not sure why, you know. It was like, they sort of said that Eck and Dayo was going to be too strong for me. And, uh, you know, it was like a boy against a man. What's he going to do when he gets taken down? And, just to shut everyone up, really, was, was just as good a feeling. You know, that's the first time I've ever been written off for a fight. I mean, I've had people say I'm going to lose and whatever, but to be completely written off by sort of everyone in the media that wasn't a Welsh journalist was, um, was something that mo motivated me for the fight as well. So to sort of just shut everyone up, um, to beat them the way I did, you know, to dominate him from start to finish, at his own game as well, where everyone thought it was going to be like that. But, but obviously the... The roles are going to be reversed. It was it was just such a, a great night for me and my team. And to be honest, it was a night I'll never forget. To do it in Wales as well on what at the time was the big was Cage Warriors one hundred, which was at the, at the time was the biggest card they've ever had. Um, and to, to obviously win it, and but not only that, to be the headline fight. You know, like the people on the undercard looking back, um, Reese McKee and Jay Herbert now in the UFC. Uh, Nicholas Dalby is now in the UFC. I had many, many, like Chris Edwards, Josh Reed, um, both t very close friends, close teammates of mine were on the undercard. So that one sort of rings on true, and I, that was a, a night I'll never forget. Fantastic, yeah. Again, it's, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's a fantastic insight, and it's an insight people don't always get just from uh, necessarily watching the fight or even watching the, you know, the press conference or whatever. So it's, it's a good insight. Now, the same sort of thing, I mean, because I'm interested in this, is obviously being signed by the UFC, and I know at the moment you, you're sort of making waves in the UFC, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But when, when you were actually first signed um, by them, I mean, what is it like to sort of get a, get a call or something, you know, that, that that had actually come true? I mean, I know that on the lead up to it, there was sort of, there was a degree of expectation that you would be, obviously, and, and, that, and that's obviously cool. But, I mean, again, I mean, you know, to, to achieve something like that after all the years of sacrifice and, and hard work, Again, it's basically, it's the same sort of thing, but, but for the UFC side of it, I mean, what, what went through your mind when you were actually signed, when you'd actually sort of, um, you know, knew that you'd made it to that level, basically? Yeah, to be honest, that was more, even more of a surreal sort of experience because, um, you know, as much as I loved, loved you know, dreamed and, and wanted to be world champion for many years, I never sort of sat there as a, as a 
as a 13 year old kid what, watching TV, like watching fights on the telly and thought, you know, I want to be a Cage Warriors world champion. That ambition sort of came as I turned pro and as I started climbing through the ranks. But, you know, I've watched the UFC since sort of nine years of age. My father has never missed a show. We've always watched every single show. So um, to, to sort of, a, you know, to finally get that, that call off my manager and, and say, oh, it was a text. It was to say, like, you know, they are interested. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sort some details now. It was like, you know, it didn't, it didn't even feel real. And I, I mean, it didn't feel real when I signed the contract. It, it didn't even feel sort of real when it was announced. It didn't actually feel real until I stepped into the cage because to, to dream of something like that for so long, you know, and then to, to finally have it come to fruition, um, to have Bruce Buffer, you know, doing your intro whilst you're watching him in the cage, to lock down, you know, you've got the UFC logo on your gloves, you've got your Reebok kit. Um, you know, I, I know Dana was in cage side for my first fight, but he was cage side for the last one. So to sort of see all these familiar faces that I see on the TV every week, you know, and I seen as a kid growing up, to, to have all that like sort of be my life now is is is, is still a little bit surreal to even talk about it now. To even to even talk now about like two weeks ago, Bruce Buffer did my intro and Dana White sat there and watched the fight. Is it's still it's still sort of it's sunken in, but it's it's still surreal when I. I don't speak about it out loud, obviously, often, you know, it's like, it's in my own head. So to say it out loud, it still feels surreal now. And, you know, if I lose three fights in a row now in the UFC, say, pack your bags, you know, you're done. At least I can say I, 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 I you know, lived and, and sort of made a childhood dream come true. You know, don't be wrong, I'd love to win the title and I'd, and I'd love to make the millions of dollars. But if that doesn't come, I, I've still sort of still worked hard enough that, that my dream as a kid come true. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it, it just shows what's possible with uh, hard work and dedication and, and with self-belief. It's, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful description. So, I mean, again, that's, now this is the other thing. It's obviously coming to your most recent fight. Now, I know I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over the um, UFC debut here, but I'm interested because of everything that's going on in, in the sort of um, COVID and everything like that and Fight Island and, and everything. I mean, it's... It's fascinating. I mean, Fight Island itself. Um, what, what, I mean, what, what is it like there? What's the experience? Um, what was the experience? Because again, I mean, you're only sort of um, two weeks in it away from that, so it's, it's quite fresh in your mind. Obviously, fantastic performance and fantastic win, by the way, just to get that in there. But yeah, I mean, Fight Island itself. It, 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 in a way, it's it's sort of unique. I mean, I know that the UFC has done events there previously, um, before obviously long before this this pandemic. But um, yeah, I mean, what was your experience going to sort of such a such an exotic? Um, location like that. I mean, it must be pretty cool. But again, what what are your sort of reflections on? Yeah, it it was a surreal experience, and and it had many pros and many cons. I mean, it wasn't all sort of plain sailing, and you know, a, a dream experience. It, as I, it was a dream experience, it was a once in a lifetime experience, I imagine. But you know, there was there was stuff as well that that was tough. But sort of to fly out there like first class, and you know, you got all the people in the in like the, you know, it, it reminds me of like the alien films, you know, where they got their face masks, they got their suits on and they, they're testing it, right, you've been tested, get back to your room. So all that was surreal, you know, we, we went for a little walk about the island the one day, there was a private beach with an octagon, there was no cars on the road, no civilians, because the, the, the sort of 10 mile radius of the island we was in was shut off just for the UFC. I mean, we was on a Formula One track, the hotel was in the middle of the Abu Dhabi uh, Formula One track, so that was insane as well. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't all sort of, you know, glitz and glam. It was a tough experience as well. Um, you know, we had to quarantine for two days in London um, before flying and then spending a further two days in Abu Dhabi quarantine. And now any, anyone who sort of did the trip or who, 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 who fights themselves will understand that sort of 10 days out from a fight to have to spend five of those days locked in an hotel room. Um, you know, two of those days I was on my own and two of those days I was with, with my father, my coach. So to do that little sort of where you can't run, you know, you can't go for a walk, you can't be active. It was very mentally and, and physically tough. I mean, there's no, there's no sort of secret. I mean, everyone who's fought on Fight Island or, or even in Vegas on the US, I mean, we, were, we were having to do this quarantine. It does complicate sort of the weight cut and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just things, again, that, that helps me build myself up mentally because I look back on the experience now and I think, well, if I could still make weight and perform you know, to the best of my ability of all these fat things in, you know, factor in the, the quarantine in the room for five days. The, we had to sleep through the day, you know, and, and train in the night because we had to fight on the American time zone. Um, 
in fact, it was 45 degrees, you know, in the middle of the night, boiling hot. They'd have to go through all that and, and still perform the way I did and still, you know, just, just still do all that whilst factoring all these outside factors I had no control over. It's just like, it's a little sort of mental, personal victory for me where I can think, well, you know, you, you still pulled it off. You still performed how you usually would despite all this shit going on. So... It was it was a it was a very unique experience. I mean, it, it, as great as Fight Island is, obviously a lot of people think you know you're going to Abu Dhabi for for ten days. You know you, you're luck, you're lucky, and and we are lucky because I mean at the beginning of the year I didn't think I would have any fights this year with this pandemic. But fortunately, I've got out there now and got one in. I can maybe get another one in before the end of the year. But it was a very very sort of tough experience as well, and it's just a testament to my team as well. Obviously, Carl and my old man came. Brett Johns and his brother were there because Brett fought just after me, so. I'm glad I got to share it with people very close to me, and I like to think you know we all helped each other get through it and just make the make a tough experience a little bit easier. But all credit to the UFC, the you know it couldn't have been any safer. The hotel couldn't have been any nicer. The the venue was spot on. You know everything still ran as smoothly as it would, as if you know you you would never think apart from the test and the no crowd, you would never think we're in the midst of a pandemic. You know the the way they look after us is is second to none. And, we're really fortunate, to be honest, to be with a company who, despite all of this madness going on in the world, can, can still do what they do and, and give us an opportunity to get paid. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a brilliant insight. It's, you know, it's one of those things where, and, and you're right, because, I mean, I, I love the, um, the UFC sort of attitude to this, um, where, you know, how they've adapted and everything like that to keep their shows going is, is fantastic. Um, brilliant. Okay, now... Uh, I've only got a few more anyway, um, but uh, moving on from that, one of the things I was going to say is obviously I had um, sort of in my mind, you know, to ask you different questions about what you think your best submission, what you think your best, this, best, that. But actually what, I, what I'm going to do is, again, is broaden it out a little bit in terms of, um, you know, looking back on your career so far. And we will get to the future, I promise, but just a couple more looking back ones, um, you know. What do you think your best your best performance that, that you're most proud of is? Now, I know that it might well be the world title, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to assume that because sometimes you talk to guys and, and it's not that, it's actually something else. So, but it, it might be that, but maybe there's more than one, I don't know. But in terms of your, um, you know, what you regard as your sort of best uh, performance in the cage, I know we haven't seen the best of you yet as well, by the way, just to throw that in there, because obviously as you as you develop and improve, it'll, it'll get better and better. But But so far... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've asked a question. What, what's your, what do you think your best performance is? Has been? Sort of two come to mind. I mean, when, when people ask me, like, what's my best performance? The, the first one that comes to mind is obviously my debut in the UFC. Just, just because it was sort of like, you know, there's always that thing in your head, you know, it is a step up, where, whether, whether we want to admit it or not, it is a step up in class. Um, so to go in there and just perform like I did, you know, I, I dominated the fight from start. My, my boxing was on point. My takedowns were on point. Um, you know, my ground and pound, and then obviously ultimately to dominate a fight for three rounds and then still get a finish in the third round when I could have sort of cruised to, to a comfortable decision win. Um, I, I was obviously over the moon with that performance. It, it generally couldn't have gone any better. You know, everything I planned for in the lead up is sort of, it couldn't have gone any better. Um, but the, the other performance, and although it wasn't my, my best performance skill wise, um, it was against Vaughn Lee. And, um, I, Probably more, most listeners may not, unless you know me sort of as, oh, for my career, you probably won't know who Von Lee is, but Von Lee has been around the, the UK scene probably 10 years. I mean, he's fought eight times in the UFC. Um, and at the time of fighting him, I was 7 and 0, so he'd had more fights in the UFC than, than I had had. And this was, this was my first fight, Abandonweight in Cage Warriors. And, um, you know, we planned for a stylistic, a style that Von Lee just you know, had shown for years, but didn't bring to the table. He, he came out like a new man. He, he was rejuvenated compared to his last couple of fights. He, he the, the things we planned for, he, he didn't do at all, you know. Like, we put, he circled a certain way. He came out and did the complete opposite. He was light on his feet. And the game plan just wasn't working. Like, the first sort of two minutes of the fight, what we expected just, just wasn't working. Um, but the reason I say this is one of my proudest performances is because I had to sort of switch it up on the night and think on my feet, you know. It was one of the first times where my route one of just, you know, hit the takedown and dominate didn't go to plan. You know, I had to sort of sit in the pocket and fight with the man, you know. fight with, Not just fight with a guy, but fight with a guy who's fought some of the best guys in the world. You know, he's fought TJ Dillashaw, Kid Yamamoto. So, 
I had to sit there and, and, and you know, for, for phases of the fight, stand in the parking and, and bang it out with a guy who, who's been in there with some of the best. So to, to fight the way I did and just sort of get into my groove and, you know, think on my feet, to be honest. I, I, I just had to throw the game plan out the window and sort of let my instincts take over. And it was a bit of a coming out party for me because I think, you know, going into the fight, a lot of people sort of thought, you know, he's a young kid. Is, is, he, is it a bit of hype? Is it sort of... You know, is this sort of even fed maybe? Like, I love the records of my previous opponents were good. Was it like, you know, this is the guy that's sort of going to cause him trouble? And I bet for sort of the first minute and a half of the fight, they thought it was. But, you know, to, to turn it up the way I did it, to eventually, you know, outstrike a guy who's an elite level striker and then to, to grind him down and punish him on the floor. Um, it, it was, it was very, a, a very sort of career defining moment for me where I sort of knew in my head. Because, I mean, I never had sort of any adversity in a fight up until that point. Is it with this one? I thought, you know what, like, they, they can pick me with a good shot or, or they can defend the takedown, but, you know, I'll, I'll get them in the end. And th that was one of my proudest performances as a, as a 20, I was only 22 at the time, so I was still a young kid. And, you know, I was very happy with that fight. And, and Vaughn Lee's a, a top-notch guy as well, me and him stay in touch regular. So it was, a, it was an honour to share the cage that night as well with a guy who I watched fight as a kid, you know. So it was, it was a special night for me that one as well. Fantastic, uh, brilliant. Another, it's another excellent insight. It really is. So, um, moving on from there now, um, another thing that, that I'd like to sort of touch on is uh, is obviously the future um, side of things, like like I've been saying, because um, you know we we spent a bit of time looking back, and, and that's obviously good. Um, but obviously, and I know obviously at the moment the future is a little bit sort of up in the air with uh, with this pandemic, and, and people have to adapt. But saying that, I mean the UFC is moving things forward very nicely, so. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, not just specifically. Now, when, with this question, I'm not just asking um, sort of immediately, um, you know, you know, like the next fight, although it'd be good to talk about that. But also, you know, you sort of your, your sort of longer term future goals, you know, over, over the next few years type of thing. You know, what's what's driving you, what's keeping you motivated, um, what you're aiming for. And I, and I know obviously the title is um, the UFC title is obviously going to come into that, but there's probably more to it than that. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, let, let's talk about the future. Let's talk about what's what's driving you um, to keep moving forward right now, basically. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's a, I mean, it sounds cliche, but the I've always enjoyed fighting. You know, I've always enjoyed competition. I enjoy the I enjoy being in the gym with the boys. You know, it can be tough some days, but ninety percent of the time you want to be there, and and you you got to sit back sometimes and you know, look at the fact that you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not working your average job and getting paid, like, very good money to, to do something that I love and that I've always wanted to do. So that, that sort of drives me and, and motivates me just, just to keep living, you know, whether I do this for another 10 years, another five years, whatever, you know. I, I've lived the dream now from sort of 21 years of age where I've trained full-time and fought full-time. And to, to keep doing that, I mean, win, lose, or draw, I, ca I can't really complain. You know, there's guys out there who are... Who are you know, there's boys who I train in the gym who, who are sort of shoveling cement friggin' nine or five five days a week and, and doing it for pennies and then having to come and train in the night. Whereas, you know, I can get up, train, go home, recover, have my food, sleep if I need to, before, do, you know, repeating the process. And, you know, I'm not trying to glitz up the fight life because it is, it is tough. It's a tough old gig, you know, training three, four times a day, dieting, sacrificing what you sacrifice. But in the, in the, in the grand screams of things, you know, it's a short-lived career and what we get paid for, you know, what we get paid for is, is to train and do all our graph and the fight to me is the enjoyable bit. And the only thing that motivates me is just, I just love fighting. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to sound like the tough guy or the hard man because people know that's, that's not my gimmick and that's not my act. But I, I, I generally love the fight. Um, you know, even for our last fight, I was in there and I, and I was sort of just thinking to myself, like, I, I mean, I'm having a good, you know, I mean, I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying myself here, you know, I'm not scared to be in here. I can't wait, it's not like I can't wait for it to be over. I, I just enjoy being in there. So if I'm in there for a minute or 15 minutes, I, I enjoy my full time in the cage. And if I'm knocking on the head next week, I'll have enjoyed the hell out of the last sort of five years of, of what I've done. And if I'm knocking on the head in 10 years, you know, I think, you know, I've had 10 years of, or 15 years then, it'll be of, of doing what I love, whether that's win, lose or draw. So... That's all that motivates me. Um, I, I also love sort of seeing the the gym name up in the lights, you know, giving my coaches the well-deserved credit they need. You know, by 
And I, 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 I don't, they don't need to hear me say it, but by me sort of fighting at the level I'm at and, and performing I am, it, it highlights how good they are as coaches as well. So I enjoy that side of it. That's motivating as well. And the results, I mean, everyone loves to win. You know, no one likes to lose. So as long as I'm winning and performing well, I'm, I'm always motivated to try and keep that streak going and sort of better my last performance. Excellent. Excellent. Good stuff. So it's only, uh, it's only I think, um, one or two more now. Um, and one of the things that I meant to touch on earlier, but I sort of skipped over, so I'll just go back there, is, is you mentioned um, the crowd chamber and you mentioned that. And, and I'm sort of curious about some other aspects of training like that. And what I mean is, again, it's not strictly speaking one question. It's sort of um, a few different things. I'm, I'm curious about the areas of nutrition, um, you know, and, and how you apply that. Um, and just, just other aspects, because where I'm sort of going with this is, is a lot of... Um, a lot of guys, you know, there's very traditional training that you can do, and, and that's fantastic. But it strikes me that you, you're sort of adding other things into the uh, into the pot, basically. So, in terms of yeah, in terms of the, the nutrition side of things, what are your sort of um, what are your sort of thoughts, and and uh, what do you do with that side of things? Um, so, yeah, so my um, I, I'm quite a big guy for the weight I fight at. Um, so I got a very good nutritionist, John Williams. He owns. Um, PAS, the, the supplement company who sponsor um, the Welsh rugby team and football team. And I work very closely with him, sort of in and out of camp. Um, he, he sets my diet plan, he, he te tests my body fat, and I update him then every week. So obviously my weight, and he'll keep me in check or, you know, adjust this, adjust that. Um, and, and I work very closely with, um, with a lot of people, you know, that, 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 that sort of help keep my nutrition on point. I mean, aside from the nutrition, sort of recovery wise I look after my body I don't I don't trash my body you know in my opinion this is not slated anyone specific but there's too many MMA fighters and too many boxers who are stuck in that sort of rocky style of training you know chuck the sauna suit on and, and run 10 mile every morning um, you know and then they wake up the next morning they fuck and then they do the same thing again you can't do it you know you, you'll have a short career your nervous system will be trashed you do that you know you've got to be getting your recovery in you know, I have a sports massage every week. I go and see the chiropractor once a month. I, I've started using the cryo chamber now, once sort of every two weeks. I, I take a rest day. Um, like I've said pre, you know, earlier on, if my body is feeling a little bit tired midweek, then I'll take, a, I'll, I'll do an easier recovery session in the morning. I'll take my foot off the gas a bit. Um, we live in a world now where it's not hard to access this, you know, these the, the benefits and 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 you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of expand our sort of, our knowledge on our body. Um, you know, like we don't need to be in a sauna suit every day. We don't need to be running 10 mile every day. Yeah, there's time for that. There's time when you've got to go for them big runs and, and tough sprint sessions. There's also times to ease off the gas a little bit. So I sort of, I, I, and I don't abuse my body with, you know, alcohol or drugs, or anything like that in the downtime wise. May have a little drink, you know, a couple of times a year, but but other than that, I sort of keep 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 yourself sort of conditioned well. I mean, the best way I always look at it is someone once said to me, I can't remember who it was, but it was like, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't put sort of diesel in a petrol car and expect it to perform well. It it would just conk out. You know, your your body's a machine when you're in fight camp, and you've got to sort of look after your body and treat treat it like a Ferrari. You know, keep it clean, check check the oil every now and then. You know, get your massage. Yeah, yeah, chiro, chiro, uh, chiropractor, sorry, your cryo chamber. Take all these things in, spend a bit of money, invest in yourself, and, and make sure your body's, you know, in the best possible shape and the best possible health it can be at, because these things will benefit you, you know. It might not benefit you in six weeks, but in six months or 12 months' time, you're going to be a much better sort of athlete for it. So, I mean, I've always, I've always listened to people around me. I've, ne I've never been sort of ignorant to that sort of thing. If someone tells me something that could benefit me, I'll take it into consideration. I'll do my own sort of research on it. And if I think I can, I can benefit from it, I'll include it in my training plan and I will. You know, so same my nutrition, I did my own thing for a long time. Um, PAS and John wanted to sponsor me. Went over, you know, he told me all his accolades as a nutritionist, said he wanted to do your diet plan. And I thought, well, he, he knows an hell, hell of a lot more about dieting than I do. So it, it just made sense, you know, if I was ignorant, I could have said, no, nah, you know, I've got it nailed down, I'll do it myself, but I didn't. So I've, I've, I've always been open-minded and, and always sort of just just been looking to get better wherever I can. You know, if if something new comes up now in six months, it's going to help me recover quicker and better, then, then I'll do that too, you know. It's, it's, all, it's all about taking into consideration the new things that come along. Technology nowadays is, 
is going up and up and up. So, you know, it, there's no need for us to be training like the guys did in the 80s when we've got all these things here to benefit us, you know, modern day. Because when we get to the top level, especially like when you're competing with the Americans and the Russians, and they are all using this stuff, you know, and they've been using this stuff for years. So we need to make sure that we're doing the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I guess, like I say, there's only a couple more um, sort of things. And, and the, one of the last ones now is really, I want to just touch on something that, that, I, um, that I think is really good to touch on here. It's obviously, you know, you've had a big impact on your community. And sort of what I mean by that is that, um, obviously, for starters, you've shown people it's possible to make. And I know it's not just you, because I know, obviously, there's other guys that are in the UFC as well. But um, in terms of, you know... Do you sort of get that situation where, you know, you have sort of the younger generation of, of um, young kids coming into MMA now that sort of look up to you and that type of thing? Because I know you teach as well and things. So, um, so I, I mean, I, I had um, that as something that I just wanted to cover because I, I think you've had a big impact on your community and a very positive impact. But in your own words, I mean, what are your experiences with sort of inspiring, um, you know, the, the younger generation of, of fighters, of athletes, basically? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's just a nice, um, it's a nice sort of like, it's a nice perk of the job. You know, I, I have kids messaging me on Instagram and Twitter daily saying, you know, they're big fans and they, they're local kids. Can I come train you? And, you know, I've always tried to, to give back where I can. Like, like you know, I'm, I am very busy. I, do I, I don't get to sort of answer every message and every request, but if, if I can, I will. You know, if anyone ever comes up to me in the street, I, I'm especially a youngster. I'm always open to a picture and having a chat with them, you know. Um, maybe not so tolerable to the, the drunken idiots in Appleary Town on a Saturday when I chew my ear off, but, you know, I always got time for the youngsters coming up. Um, I, I run the MMA class at, at Show MMA now with, with kids from anywhere. You know, you haven't got to be a certain level. You can literally just turn up and, and, and if you want to do my class, you can do my class, you know. Um, so, yeah, I try and get back, back, you know, where I can. I, I sort of... Look at look at guys like like my father for example. You know he always give back to the community a lot. A lot of the guys, you know people like Jack Marshman and Martin McDonough who trained us years ago. They'd be the first to tell him if it weren't from finding our gym, they probably have ended up dead or in jail. So um, I always try and give back where I can. There's plenty of kids now, sort of 14, 15, who I train who, you know, are very sort of they they're going to be just so much better than what I am. Like just just because of the level of training. And facility and coaching they got, you know, at such a young age compared to what I had, you know, like my 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 coaches then now are elite level, but sort of if we went back ten years ago, as good as my father was back then, you look at him now, he's got ten years of experience on what he had now. Whereas these fourteen year old kids have got him now, you know, after twenty years of training. So if I can help give back a little bit, you know, I've always wanted to, I always wanted to go into coaching. I think this is sort of my, my way in with the youngsters, you know. It's, it's only a couple of times a week I've got to give up my time to help them out. So, you know, when I, when I do hang the gloves up, it, it, it just means that the, ki the kids who I've taught from a young age will probably then be men and be looking at sort of amateur and pro. And it just means I can help, help give back a little bit to them. I mean, whether it be teaching them skills, you know, sharing my mindset with them or, or just tell them about my, you know, they... they, they you know, kids are like their 20 questions. The young kids in the gym are like, well, what was it like on Fight Island? What's this like? You know, what's it like with Bruce Buffer called it in? So whether they want to ask me about a technique or just ask me about a, an experience I've had, I, I always open to giving a, back, a bit back to them. So, uh, you know, it, it's a small community at Leary, but everyone wants me to do well. So if I can give back to the kids at the gym or the kids in the community, then, you know, obviously I will. Fantastic. And the last one, because I know that, that we've, we've both got things to do, actually. So because uh, this is sort of doubled in time than what I thought, but that's a good thing. So don't worry. <laughs> So the last one is, um, yeah, in terms of advice. Now, obviously, I know if people want advice from you, you know, they should obviously come to the gym. So I, I'm not sort of saying, you know, give too much away or anything like that. But if, if you had to sort of say to, um, or if you had to sort of say about somebody who, who wants to succeed in, in MMA, in boxing, in, in anything really that they put their mind to, what would be sort of, um, I don't know, one or two sort of key pieces of advice that, that you'd give that you'd say sort of are essential for um, for success and like I say don't give everything because I know if people want it that you come to the gym oh, but just, yeah. just a couple of things like when they walk in maybe you can see like oh you yeah. know he'll, he'll go places because of yeah. whatever yeah. You know. I'll, I'll keep it it's, it's quite short and sweet sort of whenever I get asked that question is number one your coach always knows best you know if your coach is telling to do something it's not for his benefit it's for yours he's your coach he hasn't got to go in there and fight so he's not saying it for his benefit he's saying it for you 
And, and the second thing is, as I always say it, chase the dream and everything else that comes with the dream will come with it. You know, don't chase the fame, don't chase the money, don't chase the nice cars and, you know, being the celebrity and having all these Instagram followers, you know, fuck all that. Chase the dream, you know, chase wherever, wherever your dream is, you want to be UFC champion, Cage Royce champion, amateur champion, or wherever you just want to train full time or just want one fight or you just want to do what you love. And it's not, that's not related to MMA, that's related to anything. Chase the dream of what you want to do, you know. My dream is always to train and compete full time and go to the UFC. Everything that has come with that has come as a byproduct of me chasing my dream and sacrificing my dream for all these years. So I know I tell them all the time, but I know that all the young kids at the gym will probably watch this. And I, I always say, you know, chase, chase your dream. If, if you truly love something and you want to chase it hard 100%, you're gonna have to sacrifice. You know, there's no sac- there's no success without sacrifice. Chase it hard. G- give it hundred percent, especially whilst you're young enough. You know, I mean, there's, there's guys in the gym now, 30 years of age, who, who wish they had done this 10 years ago, but you know, they've got commitments like mortgages and kids and houses that they've got to look after first before they can, you know, give to this. So chase the dream and let everything else, you know, come. Everything that comes with it will come as long as you sacrifice and and push hard towards it. Don't chase the money in the and the fame, chase the dream, and, uh, and, and you'll, you'll do all right, trust me, you know. Will you be in the best in the world? We can't guarantee that, but if you chase the dream, when you look back in 10 years, I guarantee you, you'll be a lot more proud of yourself than what you would have been if you chased the money or the fame. Brilliant. That's, that's a, that is a fantastic message, Chapman. And I just, it is a little bit off topic, but I mean, I, I love, I mean, I love um, that psychological side of things. I mean, I'm, I'm always reading all this, I don't like the term self-help really, but all that type of, you know, positive, type of stuff and it, it you know it's, it's fantastic but it's not just positive like positive I mean it's the science of how to do things the right way in life and it's, it's fantastic that you're sharing that because obviously people look up to you and that and to be honest that side of things is, is a big reason um why I've even putting this video together in the first place is, is to get that side of stuff out there so brilliant well like I said at the beginning I mean thank you very much for your time because I know we've we sort of squeezed this in but I uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me no problem mate enjoyed it and obviously Hopefully, if I get a fight booked or after the fight, we'll uh, we'll do it again and uh, and we'll uh, we'll catch up on 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 whether I won or, or lost or who the opponent is or whatever. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll definitely do it again. Oh, sounds good. Sounds really good. And I'm sure it'll be a win. You know, you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a really good, uh, really really good insight into your career and everything. And hopefully, um, it's been something you know a little bit different. In, in yeah, definitely. It's, yeah. uh, it's always nice to do one. Also, we don't have the the same old question, you know, of who you fight, who you gonna fight next, who do you wanna fight next, blah blah blah. So it's nice, uh, nice to get do uh, a bit of the deeper side of things. So yeah, I enjoy yeah. it. Oh, well. that's good. Yeah, that's what I aim for with these. Is like that, that, that deeper side of things, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, mate, I'll speak to you soon. Right, all the best. All the best. Take it easy. Ta-da. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel, and there'll be more videos coming soon.